Hello, you may be wondering why I'm holding a book this way. It's because the lighting sucks. I thought my face sucked, but it's just the lighting. See, look. Now I'm like a splotchy ghost. Until I get a ring light, this is going to have to do. Today, we are going to Denmark. This is pronounced Luca. It means happiness. It's by Mike Viking. So the only reason I have this book is because I worked at Barnes & Noble and I wanted to borrow it and then return it, but I accidentally got water stain and I felt too guilty, so I just ended up buying it. So I'm going to milk it for everything it's worth. So basically, the author of this is the guy who started the whole like huga subgenre, you know, like Danish cozy. He is the CEO of the Happiness Institute in Copenhagen. So his answer is togetherness, money, like do you have your needs covered, health, physical and mental, trust, and a related one, kindness. So the first two, health and money, oh wait, why are you in here? Get out. So the first two things, health and money, are basic needs, security. So physical health would be diet, exercise, and going outdoors, which actually has a huge impact on our mental health too. Along with healthcare, not paying $2,000 for an ambulance would be nice. Then there's mental health, which is invisible to the eye. So some people don't really take it as seriously as something debilitating they can see. And it's a factor of happiness. So if someone says, why are you sad? You have everything and you actually have depression, then clearly you don't have your health, which contributes to unhappiness. But luckily the field of psychology and mental health is progressing really well and there's less of a stigma or ignorance about it, at least in the West, I would say. Money is also a big factor of security. You should have enough to cover your food, rent, utility bill, decent clothing, transportation. Also the occasional fun outing or purchase without anxiety or guilt. Also, our man Mike talks about buying experiences rather than things and not falling into the psychological trap of having to one-up people to feel superior. In the US, for example, somebody could make a six-digit figure as a salary, but they constantly need to prove themselves, so they'll just keep buying and buying and they won't be happy, and they'll run out of money, and it's just a vicious cycle. So basically, instead of having the newest gadget or the newest iPhone, he's saying to spend it on experiences. And depending on your mood, maybe you'll have a nice relaxing day all by yourself, or you might go out with friends and make memories together. It's cool because he um, does statistics. Basically, he would take the numbers of how often you meet with friends, family, coworkers, and then how many people you can discuss intimate things with, just for an example. Then he'll compare it to their self-reported levels of life satisfaction or happiness levels, and he gets pretty interesting results. And speaking of togetherness, um, that brings us to our third happiness factor. It's extremely important to be comfortable with yourself on your own and to feel fulfilled, but it must be balanced with a sense of belonging or togetherness. Being with people doesn't necessarily mean belonging or togetherness because you could be in a room full of people and still feel isolated. That's definitely something I've experienced and a lot of people seem to be experiencing the same thing. Then there's kindness and trust, which is pretty much self-explanatory. I know I feel on guard just walking around my neighborhood in the evening before the plague. Um, if I were in a cafe and I were to go to the bathroom, I'd make sure to have someone watch my stuff. Whereas he gives the example in Denmark, you know, people <laughs> leave their babies outside while they hang out in the cafe. Like they'll just they'll just leave them in a group of strollers. It's just expected that you won't kidnap a child. And most people feel safe enough to leave their belongings on their chair while they're going to the bathroom. That's not to say that there's no kidnappings or no theft, but it's significantly lower. So basically each factor of happiness has its own section and he describes maybe alternate ways of living that have brought people happiness, how these factors compare in different cultures, and obviously there are the statistics about relating happiness to the five factors he talks about. And he says that even though we can learn a lot from Danish people, 
there are ideas all around the world. So it's good that we share culture in this digital age. And then, of course, he goes into what these countries do. And lastly, this book is just so good for paradigm shifts and helping you apply these factors to your own life. It was just overall fun to read and really useful. Okay, I will end it there. I'm not cooking this time because um, Mama Yunch and I need to lay off the sugar. And, and honestly, the only thing you can cook here is like some sort of Danish pastry. I was thinking about making the bloodless neuras, but the bloodless neuras aren't happening. But next time, I hope to do some DIY or cooking. That would be super fun. And as usual, please let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations. And maybe in five years, we can finally complete this challenge. Okay, go check out my biking and hey, hey.